Okay, so I am departing Marrakesh for now the second time. <laughs> and fingers crossed that everything goes smoothly at the airport. Hopefully they let me on the flight. Uh, if so, I'll be in Kiev tomorrow around about 2 p.m. It's a long way to get to Kiev. It's a long way to go. I don't know if I'll get there. But if I do, I'll let you know. Hey! Oh, I got sweat in my eye. It burns. It burns so good. Well, I made it to the Marrakesh airport. Um, it is pretty quiet around here. If nothing else, I'm at least inside the airport. I wasn't even sure if I would even be let inside after I already purchased the ticket. Ukraine, a few days later, announced that they uh, are no la longer letting non-nationals into the country. I don't know. <laughs> Well, um, just got back from the ticket counter and uh, they're telling me that it's not possible for me to go to Ukraine. Um, they're saying that the only exception would be if I had a wife or a child in Ukraine, which I do not. Gonna get on the internet and uh, figure out what my options are. So I'm looking into other options to change my flight to go to other countries. I went up to the Air France ticket counter and asked them about changing my flight to go to Turkey to Istanbul instead of Ukraine and they looked into the restrictions and they said that that is an option for me. So then I asked, I, I, I asked, okay, how much, how much will it be to change my flight to go to Turkey instead of Ukraine? And they said, well, you have to talk to Air France. And I looked up at the sign and I said, are you not Air France? And they said, no, we're just the handlers for Air France. I don't know what that means. But I said, okay, so who here is with Air France that I can talk to? And they said, nobody, you have to call Air France. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so basically, all of this boils down to um, just wait to travel. <laughs> Anyone who's not in my specific situation, just wait to travel. Adventures in pandemic travel. Okay, plenty of bad news. Um, but one piece of good news, one piece of great news that makes up for all of the bad news. Good news is, is that I called Air France and I've never flown with Air France before, um, but they are already my new favorite airline because I called Air France and at the very last minute, literally less than 20 minutes before my flight was scheduled to take off the woman i talked to at air france she helped me figure out that i could go to istanbul turkey which was uh, number two at the top of the list of the next countries that i wanted to go to considering all of the circumstances she found a flight for me for less than half of what this ticket cost me so I have a flight that is 99% guaranteed uh, to get me out of Morocco and on to my next destination and it's only gonna cost me about $66 that's right flying during a pandemic for about $66 that's incredible I'm not I'm not trying to get out of Morocco because I hate it I don't I love Morocco so I'm 100% okay with staying here for another week. And so yeah, so I'm gonna make 
make uh, the best of of my last eight days here in in Morocco hey that's part of what all this adventure of long-term travel is about is sometimes you get a little uncomfortable sometimes you have to settle so yes the adventure continues 207 days one week shy of seven months and today is the day this is attempt number three with the last two times that I tried to get out of Morocco. Um, it wasn't looking good from the start. So this time it's looking good. Uh, flight is on schedule. There should be no hiccups. I think we're good. It's gonna be a about a 30 minute walk to get to the supermarket in between here and the airport. Wow, um, <laughs> I just left the car for, got some stuff for, for sandwiches, and I've never felt like so much of a shoplifting suspect. When I went in, they insisted that I leave my backpack at the front, at the front uh, which is fine. Totally get that, totally understand that. But then on a couple different occasions, while in the store, a security officer came and spied on me. And then on my way out to get my, my backpack, uh, the manager insisted on checking to make sure that I had a receipt for my groceries. <laughs> this is actually the second time in Morocco that I've had an experience similar to this. When I was in Tetuan, I was at a car for I literally had a security officer following me around for half of the time that I was in in the store. I don't know. Do I do I look like look like your average shoplifter? Uh, I don't know. Tell me. <laughs> Comment below. So I left car four. I'm on my way. Heading to the airport. Um, Google Maps says that it'll be about 47 minute walk from Carrefour to the airport. Here we go. Istanbul, Istanbul. <laughs> this is now my third time at the Marrakesh airport. I'm hoping this is the last time that I'm here for a while. I'm here almost six hours before my flight is scheduled to take off and um, the uh, the counters the check-in counters aren't even open yet uh, my shirt is completely drenched in sweat <laughs> it is 3 38 p.m been here at the airport since just after noon and I've got my tickets <laughs> I am checked in my big bags checked in I am on my way to the boarding area Woo! it's guaranteed Woo! <laughs> and finally on my way out of Morocco heading to Istanbul, Turkey. We are rolling out, we're backing up right now. And it was kind of funny, the um, instructions that they do, the pre-flight safety instructions. I am the only person on this flight that does not speak Dutch. So they had to do the instructions in English just for me. <laughs> I feel special. <laughs> just upgraded me to a, uh, a row with a lot more leg room, so this is nice. That's one thing for me. 
big six foot four inches. I'm always cramped on airplanes. I will always take a free uh, extra leg room upgrade. The only downside, uh, not a great view. I'm right on the wing, which, you know, isn't bad. It's nice and stable right on the wing, but the wing is completely blocking my view. Oh well. I just landed in Amsterdam. It is 10, 10.55 p.m. So, all right, I'm gonna see what the situation here is here at the airport overnight. Pretty much settled in here in the uh, Amsterdam airport and I've never been here before I'm gonna say this is one of the most interesting airports I've ever seen when you have an airport pretty much all to yourself for the night you get to explore you get to see everything that it has to offer Clearly lots of fun stuff here at this airport. This whole airport, this whole airport is like, it looks more like a kid's um, amusement center, like a kid's play center than it does an airport. The, this is the McDonald's that I'm walking around inside. It's like postmodern McDonald's. <laughs> this place is ridiculous. This is, I don't know if that, maybe the other area was just McDonald's seating area, but if I'm not wrong, I think this place actually has two McDonald's or two McDonald's inside of this airport. So if this airport isn't already cool enough, it even has its own museum here. I'm going to find somewhere to settle in for the night and see if I can get a decent decent night's rest. It's it's just after 11 in the morning. Here I am. I'm now here for my second flight the rest of the way to Istanbul. So I'm going to get on this flight and I should be in Istanbul in about 5 hours, I think. It is 4 p.m. local time here in Istanbul. And, oh, I gotta fill out some paperwork. Hold on. It is about 4.30 Istanbul local time. And I just arrived. I just arrived in Istanbul, Turkey. And I feel like, I feel like my, my nearly seven months of lockdown in Morocco is finally over. I plan to stay here in Turkey for at least a month, probably two months, maybe even up to 90 days before I move on to another country. Apparently there's a bus that goes uh, directly from here, the airport, all the way to just, just a few blocks away from my hostel. I'm trying to 
past me. Yeah. Exchanging money at the airport is an absolute nightmare. Um, tried to exchange $16 worth of Moroccan dirham and they only wanted to give me $10 for it. Pretty much never exchange your money at the airport or if you absolutely have to, just exchange the bare minimum at the airport and then go into town and exchange the rest of your money in town. You're gonna get a much better rate if you go in town and find a money exchange place in town or even like individual people versus going to the businesses that claim that they don't charge a commission, but they're not charging a commission because they're giving you a really bad exchange rate. tell that I have not had much sleep in the last 48 hours. Uh, the bus just dropped me off just right at the north end of Taksim Square. So I'm walking right along the edge of the square right now. Okay, 20 minutes, hostel, check-in. <laughs> It's like doner kebab heaven here. <laughs> this place is beautiful. The food looks amazing and it's cheap. I think I'm gonna like turkey. All right, um, so yeah, that took me um, just a little over 20 minutes to walk from where the bus dropped me off. Um, to get to here and then find it. That's me on the bottom bunk. Pretty basic, that's okay. There's lockers back here. I've got locker number one and there's even a camera, security camera looking at just at the lockers and not at the rest of the room, so that's nice. <laughs> Pretty basic little kitchen, a little washing machine, so that's nice. Um, I'm here, I made it. This is the next chapter of my adventure so awesome, great. Um, I'm gonna have tons of really awesome content coming up all about Turkey and my experience here, the food, exploring Istanbul. Subscribe, like if you liked this video, I hope you did. Uh, consider sharing it if you, if you know anybody who will like this channel and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Please consider supporting us on Patreon. Our channel supporters receive a lot of awesome benefits. And if you want to check out the rest of the series, you can do so right here. And please subscribe and turn on the notification bell for new episodes every first and third Thursday of each month. Thanks.